numbers come, you, you can sort of compare it with um, 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 what's the animal called? Zeehold, what is the English word? Seal. 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 seal, that's it. Um, a seal goes under water at regular times to come up for air. And uh, that's what readers do too. They come up for air during reading. They, they take a sort of break. They, they break the spell of reading and then look for a while at text and then that's when they recognize their favorite newspaper, their own newspaper. And uh, uh, that's when they uh, recognize their favorite books. And uh, uh, there are definitely uh, moments when uh, readers see, uh, but on the, the new reading surfaces are completely redefining the reading game in many respects, very many respects. It's even a question whether what we call immersed reading, reading for uh, any length of time, will survive. Um, what we see at the moment, for example, is very interesting. I had always expected that when uh, web design, design for the screen, was going to mature, we would see book typography, classical typography, um, being introduced to the web. What we see at the moment is completely reverse, web design entering into book and magazine and newspaper typography. Completely the reverse. And it has come as a great surprise, and we don't know yet very well what to do with it and where it will lead us, but it's uh, definitely happening. So we have to keep our minds open and uh, constantly uh, be on the uh, alert for all kinds of new developments and uh, try to react to these. Thank you. Another question, please? For your um, I have some question about uh, uh, the fundament of your uh, lecture. Is it too much uh, that what is left in the libraries and not what was sold in uh, the 17th, 18th century? Um, yeah, there certainly is a bias, but um, I, for, for the title pages, for instance, uh, my sample contains about 860 books. So um, I try to, um, yeah, to escape from that uh, bias, but I'm well aware of the fact that certain uh, books uh, in, in large quantities have disappeared. But um, that doesn't count for text genres and that's why I use for on the microstructural level text genres because um, my study of uh, theatre programs learned me that you can derive the same, uh, the same conclusions from 40 uh, programs um, as from 800 programs. I only realized that in the end, of course. <laughs> but so you, you need, you need a, a minimal portion of surviving editions, and uh, it's essential that you try to follow the same text as much as possible uh, for a long period of time. And it's all very difficult, but um, it's yeah, well, it raises a lot of new sorts of questions and new things to look at. And I think that that's perhaps one of the most uh, interesting things of such a project, that it, <laughs> new questions arise. So, yeah. Yeah. But yes, I uh, made an inventory of Dutch prayer books from the late 17th century until, until the uh, mid of the 19th century. And uh, in my inventory, about 7% of the black letter books, uh, uh, the black letter books have about 70%. Uh, the Roman letter types are uh, uh, overwhelming in the majority. Um, but I found uh, some moments in my uh, research period, uh, a bookseller's book in Amsterdam, for the eight, in the end of the 18th century. About 70% of his prayer books were in black letter, and only 7% were in Roman letter. So, um, is there not a, a, yeah. a serious problem in, in this uh, difference? The new books are, I think you are right, in 
uh, from about uh, also the prayer books from about uh, 1680 in the Netherlands, in the Low Countries, in the Roman letter time. But the old books uh, were until the early 19th century in, in the Black Letter time. And they were in the majority at the end of the 18th century. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think there's a lot going on at the end of the 18th century. And um, yeah, um, there's also the problem of uh, uh, impoverishing uh, uh, Flanders. And I think there's much more a struggle for printers to sell their things, their books. And um, therefore, you see at the end, end of the 18th century an increasing product differentiation too yeah, and um, but that's yeah that's just another uh, another project I think to <laughs> find out what's happening exactly there but um, that's why why I work with uh, on, the, on one level a uh, macro structural analysis of large amounts of thousands of editions uh, blindly and combine it with a microstructural uh, approach in order to but this is I know when I told you last year this is an unendless project <laughs> so, yeah. well the exchange is so exciting that I propose that we go on a little bit to also as an appetizer so yes please there's a question over there Question for Johan too. I believe I missed a very important kind of books, namely school books. When is the switch in school books from black letter to Roman? Because when people learn to read, and they learn to read in black letter, they are used to it from their childhood. And I suppose it will be very familiar for them to read books in black letter. Once school books are printed in Roman, they will be used to reading Roman letters. So when, isn't it important to find out when the switch will be made in school books and maybe on different levels of schooling, basic school, Latin school, where is that uh, switch made? And maybe that explains a bit why people want or still want books in black letter or one book in Roman letter. That's a very good suggestion. But, um, there's uh, something going on in the next room now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that you can, yeah. Is that, but, well, uh, uh, yes, yes. The, the change from Black Letter to Roman Letter is in the early, early decade, the first decade of the 19th century in the Northern Netherlands. So then they, they complain about, they complain then about, uh, the uh, impossibility to read the Bible. They have to change uh, the letter type from black letter to uh, Roman letter in the early decades of the 19th century in the Northern Netherlands. Another yes. final question? Ik dacht ik aan de 